This is a strange story. Look at this. This is the equivalent of headline news in 1678. <laughs> this is what happened. Somebody comes over to chop down a farmer's crop. He's called a mower. The mower wanted a lot of money. The farmer wasn't willing to pay that much. So the farmer gets all pissed off and says, I'd rather have the devil chop down these crops than you, man. That night, <clears throat> the farmer's in bed and the whole field lights up like it's on fire. The perfect circle appeared in the crops the next morning, as it says in this thing you just saw, so neatly mowed that no mortal man could have done it. Well, now we believe that it's a bunch of drunk guys walking around. Hey, isn't this right? We're making a quote circle. That's not the way it worked back then. They were smart enough to know that no person could have done this. So this is the illustration. So, of course, if no person could have done it, it's got to be the devil. It's obvious. Everybody knows that. So it's the devil. There he is doing his little job. He's going around doing his thing. Okay, now we have Dr. Robert Plott, who's at the beginning of the Renaissance, a very educated and enlightened scientist, who was smart enough to look at the hip bone of a megalosaurus and see something entirely different. It's the world's first homoerotic paleontologist because he saw the scrotum of a giant here. What a boner that would be. <laughs> All right. So what he did is he started to look at these crop circles forming and he actually drew pictures of them in the 1600s. These are his actual photographs. These are not just circles, quote unquote. That's a spiral. That looks like somebody's ear with a sound wave going into it. And here is a perfect square inside a perfect circle. So Dr. Robert Plott's educated hypothesis was, oh, well, there's a piece of square wind, you say, and the square wind is making a square hole in the crops. That's actually not much better than what modern scientists are trying to say for crop circles now. So nothing has changed in 400 years, unfortunately. He also found that the soil underneath the crop circles was much drier than ordinary, which smelled like moldy bread, but then what does the guy do? He puts it in his mouth and he tastes it. That's a dedicated scientist. Oh my God, it's horrible. <laughs> Except he found that it didn't taste bad. So what do we know this is? This is all the water being zapped out of the soil. It's totally dried out. That's a cosmic thing that happened. That's an extraterrestrial technology. Dr. Gil Levengood documented the same thing in the 1990s, exactly the same thing, so it's still working the same way. In the late 1940s, somebody witnessed a whirlwind touching down and forming a circle in the corn. He believed it was wind. In only three or four seconds, you have this perfect sharp edge circle that was very large, three or four meters wide, happen. It's about 30 feet. Not quite 30 feet, but it's big. It's like 15, 20 feet. August 1972 in Warminster, he, hear, he hears a noise, something pushes down the wheat, but check out the last line, what does it say? The air was what? Completely still. There's nothing going on, no wind that could have explained what happened here. In front of my eyes, I could see a great imprint taking shape. The wheat was forced down in a clockwise direction. He hears a high-pitched humming noise, and the circle opens up like an oriental fan unfolding. Guess what, guys? That's not weather, that's not wind, that's not a bunch of drunk guys walking around stamping down the crops. This guy witnessed it. We can put people in prison based on eyewitness testimony. That's what he saw. Well, let's stop talking about him and start looking at him because that's where it gets more fun. Here you have uh, the original type of circles you'd see and then you start to get these patterns of four and there's a little one down here that was originally called grape shot. These kinds of patterns start showing up all the time. Two circles connected by a line with this little arch, or sometimes it was there, sometimes it wasn't, which in pagan symbolism is the pregnant goddess. This is the pregnant belly, here's the head, and here's the arms. But of course, the circle makers couldn't be content by showing us such primitive diagrams, so they came back a couple years ago and they did this. <coughs> oh, sorry. Here we have the goddess, of course, in a geometric form, but it's very clearly obvious that's what we're seeing again. This is the rebirth of the Earth coming into being. You see three goddess formations in this from 1990. This was Alton Barnes, 1990. Made it onto the cover of the Led Zeppelin CD box set, actually. That's a much nicer version of the photograph, too, before everybody tamped it down like you see in this one. All this footsteps messing it up over here. That's not there. Well, this one is one of the greatest ones <clears throat> in terms of the impact that it had. Richard Hoagland was really the one who made this the most popular. It shows, basically, we think it shows first dimension, second dimension, third dimension, and then fourth in the middle, the geometry. 
these lines are perfectly equated with a tetrahedron inside a sphere. This is a situation where a bunch of people were sitting around studying crop circles and they said, oh wow, wouldn't it be great if they did a Mandelbrot set, this fractal? The very next day it shows up in the crop. So somebody's listening. A uh, truck driver drives by this part of the field. He doesn't see anything there. Fifteen minutes later, the farmer is going out there and he sees this thing in his crops. It wasn't there 15 minutes earlier. It showed up in 15 minutes in 1996. Surveyors were asked how long it would take to do this if you plotted it all out on the ground. They said minimum two to three days, and that would be if you really worked all day and all night. It's a beautiful formation, 15 minutes. This one's even more outrageous in 1996 because now you get like three of them rather than just one. And they form this very interesting cat's cradle of equilateral triangles when you look at it from the top down. Now here's another fractal. And of course the, science, the skeptics start saying, well, this isn't really a Koch snowflake. A Koch snowflake is just taking the triangle and making the inverse and then iterating it more and more and then you get this thing that looks like a snowflake. Circle maker says, oh, you don't think it's a Koch snowflake? Well, here, uh, you're really stupid, so we're going to give you another one. <laughs> we'll put a snowflake in it this time just so you can figure it out. People still don't get it. Now that is obviously caused by an army of hedgehogs running round and round and round. It's perfectly rational scientific explanation. A bunch of drunk gentlemen coming back from the pub one night with long boards on their feet and a funny cap with a string and they're walking round and round tamping down the crop circle having the greatest time of their lives making absolutely geometrically precise formations in record time over one night. I don't think that's what happened. <laughs> and this is the kind of stuff that they were doing 1,200 years ago causing Agabard to prohibit the, the pagans from taking these things out for fertility rituals, all the crops from these circles. This is what they're doing now. It's the same technology. That's my favorite one yet. Never seen one that makes me happier than that one. Look at the precision. There isn't a single part of this that's geometrically out of alignment. Nobody on the ground could have done that in the one night that it showed up in. It's just too complex. Well, there's a message in there. Genetic changes in evolution. Look at this. This is chromosomes breaking from 1991. When chromosomes break, that means the cell is about to divide. That's what this is showing you. So there's some sort of evolution happening. You look in 1996, you see a very clear illustration of DNA. Do you, you see the double helix there? Can everybody see that? I also want you to pay attention to this shape right here. I want you to look at that shape, memorize that little, that little part. We're going to get back to that in a minute. This is the same kind of sine wave you see here, but it's in a geometric pattern. That's 99. Now look at what happens less than a month later. Exactly the same formation, but now it's got even more strands. So it's saying something is going to be happening to DNA. That's the suggestion. That's one suggestion. There are others. Here's one that again is showing you DNA, but it's in a perfect circle, a perfect ring. You can obviously see the double helix and the little ladders connecting the two sides together. It's beautiful. But this is the one that really gets me off. You have the galaxy in the center, the Milky Way galaxy, and then you have these waves of DNA, and you have this pattern being flagged. Look at that. There's your double helix. Everybody see that? And this is being pumped out by the galaxy, but look at this. In the Hebrew mystical tradition, that's a special shape called a yod, which refers to divine light coming down into manifestation on the earth. And I don't have it in this particular slideshow, but if you look at the tower card in the tarot, there's all these yods around the tower that's being struck by lightning. That represents divine manifestation. So this is actually a further message saying that this DNA energy is a divine manifestation. The definitive 2012 formation is right here. This showed up last year. And what it does, or might have even been, it was this year, wasn't it? Man, it hasn't been that long. Or no, I think it was last year. I'm sorry. Um, it's, I've been using this ever since it showed up. Now, there's some interesting things going on here. Um, we look at the sun, okay? Now, look at the diameter of the sun. We know that all of these objects here represent the planets, and it's a specific planetary alignment. Well, it's actually December 21st. This man made a mistake, but it's close enough with two days off. You can't really make much of a difference in terms of any of these positions. But around December 21st, 